What's up, everybody? Welcome to some Samut action. Hope you're ready to get your Naya midrange on. I am. Let's get the chat all closed out. See who we're playing against. Yeah, this is the first Naya commander that I've built, so I'm actually really excited about it. It's uh, I'm not a huge Naya person to begin with. That's not my... Uh, those aren't the colors that I sparked with, but... Um, yeah, whenever I saw that she was spoiled, I was like, hey, why not? Let's have some fun. We've got Edric Spymaster. Let's see, as far as opening hand goes, we've got Guy's Cradle, Temple of Abandon, Ancient Tomb. We've got a lot of mana, and we have Worldly Tutors. Uh, search the library for a creature card, put it on top. Um, yeah, we're going to keep on this one. Uh, you know, we don't really have a really good active Guy's Cradle, but hopefully uh, between the Scribe and Temple of Abandon and Worldly Tutor, we can kind of get into some fun stuff and then outrace the Simic Alarms over there. So we're playing some Moot, Voice of Descent. Um, actually, let's, uh, let's get our turn going for it. Let's go for the Temple of Abandon. Get that scry up and running. Sort of Feast and Famine. Do we want that right now? No, we want to get some creatures up and running. You know, that would be nice. Protection from black and green. Well, actually, protection from green could be pretty important in this one. Let's go ahead and put this on top. I actually do like that now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, we're playing Samut. Uh, she has Flash, a Double Strike, Vigilance, and Haste. Other creatures you control have Haste. Then for one white mana, untap target creature. Playing against Ed Edric Spymaster. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw eight cards. So they get out a million elves, and they swing in, and they draw a million cards, and then it's just... It gets crazy. <laughs> That's what happens. All right, so we draw the Sword of Feast and Famine. Um, let's go ahead and go for the... If we go for the Command Tower, I guess it really doesn't matter. We can put the Sacred Foundry to play tapped and then go for a little bit of Worldly Tutor and put that on top of our library. I think I like that. Yeah, let's go and put the Sacred Foundry down. Not going to pay two life. And while they're tapped out, let's just go ahead and go for a Worldly Tutor. Uh, I think what we may end up going for is our Sage because that allows us to kind of get into a little bit of extra mana. Where are you, buddy? It's the Sumberworld Sage. There we go. Sumberworld Sage. Uh, at three mana. You get into spots where you can get that down, and then you can reactivate with Samut to get a, kind of a little bit of extra mana, and then we can actually lead off with the Guy's Cradle or Ancient Tomb to get that down. Kind of have some fun from there. So, But yeah, as far as the, the my build of Samut, it's pretty straightforward. This is uh, ramp into nice value creatures, and then we have a real heavy uh, reliance on the... Um, Real heavy reliance on the Kiki Jiki combo. Um, I have a lot of ways to get into the Kiki Jiki combo and kind of go infinite. I wanted to build this deck a little bit more of a um, kind of a little bit more of a competitive style of deck. So um, on this one, you know, uh, we will be pushing kind of hard to win in a combo style if we don't really have a bunch of value creatures to kind of close it out with as far as swinging in. Okay, draw the sage. Let's go ahead and get the. Um, I guess it didn't really matter. Let's go and get the command tower down. Let's get the sage coming in. And then we'll go ahead and tap out right there. Okay, go ahead and pass there. So we're looking at three mana next turn. We can definitely flash in some moot and still have an extra white mana to activate and end up with three more mana. Now, we don't really have any creatures. We still have Enlightened Tutor. We need to figure out something we can do with. We can grab an artifact or enchantment card. And we still have Sword of Feast and Famine and Guy's Cradle. So once we get our creature count up, we're going to get into spots where we can really start generating a lot of green mana. But yeah, as far as Kiki Jiki goes, we've got Kiki Jiki, we've got the Zealous Conscripts in here, we've got the Bell Ringer uh, that flashes, untaps all your creatures. Uh, we also got Splinter Twin in here, and we're also running uh, Tooth and Nail. That way we can Tooth and Nail for uh, one of our combo pieces. So, and we also have uh, Kiki Jiki on the um, the new Combat uh, Among Cat card. I can't, I can't Combat Celebrant, I think the one basically you just get infi you get uh, infinite uh, exertion uh, combat steps. So pretty fun. Okay, so our opponent's getting some, uh, got the tireless tracker out there with those clue tokens. That's going to add up pretty quick, so we kind of need to get some, some stuff up and running. Now, with the flash ability, we can actually wait until if they want to swing in, we can flash this in and kind of get that little double strike action up and running. Get the God of Victory. Uh, let's go ahead and get down Guy's Cradle. That way it's going to be able to tap for two. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five. That's going to be, yeah, let's go ahead and... We still have Enlightened Tutor. We can get down the God. We can swing in. We're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Untap. 1, 2, 3. We can still cast that creature off some moot. Um, let's go ahead and, instead of waiting for them to kind of do something silly, um, they don't really have any mana. Let's go ahead and go for some moot right now. Let's go ahead and cast that. So we're looking at uh, 1, 2, 3. Let's go ahead and add that triple uh, green to our mana pool. And then we're looking at red. There we go. And we can use the Y to untap some moot to get get that extra mana. They're going to be able to swing in. Do we really want to get down the God of Victory that bad? That's what I was thinking about. No. Um, 
let's go ahead. We're looking at one, two, three. We can still get down the sword of feast of famine. Yeah, let's go and do that. We're looking at one, two. That way we can still chop and block. I like that play a little bit better. Now I was thinking about getting down the god of victory, and then I, I remembered that we're just going to be a little bit far away f from devotion right now, and so I, I ended up not wanting to go for that line of play. So that's why if I sync with something weird like that, it that's that's the reason why. And to be fair, this is probably like the the third or fourth game that I'm playing with this deck. So. As I build new decks and I record them for the channel, um, I, I like to take my time with them, but also, you know, I like to get them out there so people can watch them. So uh, there's just little lines of play in the deck that I'm just still getting the kinks or the cobwebs out. But yeah, so we have the combo in here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we've got that's pretty fun. Caustic Caterpillar, sacrifice to destroy target artifacts. So fair enough. Um, the good thing is, though, if they want to start swinging in with Edric, we still have these Samut. That way we can uh, double strike Vigilance and Haste. We can start um, blasting these creatures over there if they want to go activate the cost of caterpillar on the sword of peace and famine okay so we've got rich car coming in uh, enters the battlefield put a plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures and then those creatures are going to be able to add green mana if they have a counter on it right now game plan is just kind of hold back let them just kind of just chill uh, we can enlighten tutor for a splinter twin on a value creature and just start uh, <laughs> just having a lot of fun with that get in the spots where you can put it on the sage and just start making a bunch of uh, mana creatures uh, oh we draw the war leader and she does have haste Okay, so let's go ahead and get the Ancient Tomb down. Now if we swing in Double Strike, we're able to take care of a bunch of creatures over there. And they do not have a... No, they do have enough mana to activate on the Caustic Caterpillar if we do give it protection. So let's go ahead and go the War Leader. So we're looking at adding Triple White to our mana pool. And then we need Double Red... Okay, we're going to get on the War Leader. We can put the Sword of Feast and Famine on Samud if we want to. Um, that way we can have them at least go ahead and tap and activate. You know, they can do it in response to us swinging in if we want to go for that. Um, is that what we want to do? We can equip for two. Yeah, let's go ahead and... We're going to have that four mana to our mana pool. Let's go ahead and equip onto the... Samud. That way we kind of force them to use the Caustic Caterpillar. Okay, we're going to put that on. We're going to be able to untap our lands whenever it attacks, um, or whenever it deals combat damage to a player. Anything else we do? No, we're good. We still have the uh, the, the uh, command tower. Okay, so we're going to go and swing in. We have protection from green if they want to activate the Caustic Caterpillar, which it looks like that's what they might be going for. Okay, now this puts them into a spot to where we can just kind of just kind of swing in, not really worry about them. If they want to chump block on some of those creatures, then we can go for it. Okay, so we're going to come in hot. We're going to untap the uh, the Sage over there. And see how they want to, uh, if they want to block up on any of this. Okay, that's going to be three. It's going to be six coming across. Puts them down to 21. And then we have another attack step. Come in hot again. And we still have the Enlightened Tutor. So we're going to figure out what we want to go for with the Enlightened Tutor. Unfortunately, we can't put the uh, Splinter Twin on the, the War Leader to get a bunch of extra combat steps because it is a legendary creature. But we'll still go ahead and fire this off, see what we can do to kind of help us kind of close it out. Now, as far as the God of Victory, we need Devotion 7 to turn it into a creature. Um, so we're looking at, uh, as far as red goes, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can actually go for the, um, we can get the, uh, we can get down the God of Victory next turn. That's going to turn on Devotion and it will have haste, so we can start swinging in right there. That'll be a good line for next turn. And we still have the Enlightened Tutor to kind of just kind of search something up. So, but yeah, as far as Naya Commanders goes, I, I'm not like, I don't have anything against Naya Commanders. I'm just, that's just not my personal play style. Like, I, I like to play like a black deck or with some Soul Tie in there, some blue mixed in there. It's a little bit of Reanimator, a little bit of Zombies. So, uh, I've just never really been a Green White or Naya Aggro person. So, but I'm excited to build the deck. It's pretty fun. And, uh, you know, I like to keep a, a little bit of variety on the channel. So, um, you know, I like building fun decks, but at the same time, it's fun to build a little bit more of a competitive style deck or something that's a little bit more finely tuned. So, and this deck's been been a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of my playtesting has led to some really interesting games. And uh, we get the Tusker coming in. Which one's that one? The Cycling, Search and Line for a Basic, put on the back. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's been pretty fun so far. Um, I have not yet to get to the, the Kiki Jiki combo yet. I've had it my opening hand a couple times, but I have not yet to get have haven't had the opportunity to fire that off yet. 
and make sure we don't have auto yield on so we can fire this on light and tutor off. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun so far. Definitely, um, it, what I always look for in a deck is something that allows us to get a nice little game. Like I want to, like especially with the rule change from thir from 40 to 30 life. Uh, so if we're playing a really fast deck, sometimes you end up with a really quick uh, game. And so um, when you play decks like this, a little bit more mid rangey, and then you're just relying on a kiki jiki combo, maybe drawing into it or something like that. Um, it kind of makes for a little bit better video because I'm always shooting for like a around a 15 minute video. That that's the sweet spot. If it's a 10 minute video, then you know, then I had to do something pretty cool, or maybe our opponent did something pretty cool. But once you get to the 15 minute mark, that means uh, some nice some nice little uh, commander action happened, and that's always really good. So. And then that's what I'm always shooting for. And decks like this that are a little bit have a little bit more legs, they're just a little bit just more little value. Uh, tap an untapped creature control, tap artifact creature, artifact creature or land. Okay. Let's see what they're going to go for once they get the opposition down. They can tap two creatures. Let's go ahead and fire this enlightened tutor off. And what do we want to grab? So we can go assemble the legion. We have Marari's Wake. We have Splinter Twin. We have Sword, Sylvan Library. If we go assemble the legion, it's going to be a little bit slow, but it'll give us a nice little because with the opposition out there, uh, tap and untap creature control. So we're looking at they can tap two, and I would assume that they're going to tap our war leader and some moot. Um, then after that, it's going to be a little hard for us to kind of rally from there. Um, let's go ahead and. I'm almost tempted to grab Splinter Twin just in case we draw into like Zealous Conscripts or something. Um, everything else is just going to be a little bit hard to deal with that opposition over there. But the Symbol of the Legion is going to get us in spots where we're just going to... Yeah, let's go Symbol of the Legion. I like that. I like a Symbol of the Legion. It gets into spots where we're going to hopefully be able to outrace that opposition uh, if we can't find an answer for it. We do have a, a few different ways to deal with enchantments in here. We have uh, Nature's Claim and uh, a few other things in here. Just fortunately, we don't have anything like uh, Oblivion Ring to search up with that. Okay, let's see. See what we draw for the turn. Looking at a symbol of the legion, let's go to get the force down. Um, let's go ahead and force them to go ahead and tap some creatures before we go to the symbol of the legion. We can go for the god of victory. So we're looking at. Yeah, if we go god of victory, it's going to give our creatures menace, prevent all combat damage. Prevent all damage will be dealt to attacking creatures that we control. Let's go ahead and let's go for the god of victory. So we're looking at. Let's add that triple red and then go white. And we'll have Devotion online. That'll give us a nice little extra creature. Especially if they tap one of the creatures, that'll still be a nice little 7-4 that we can kind of swing in with. And then on the back end, we can go for the, uh, the symbol of the Legion. All right, so let's go and swing in. It's going to prevent all combat damage from our creatures. Tap the War Leader, fair enough. And see what else they go for. More than likely, the... Might be the God of Victory. Either way, you know, it's kind of, we're going to have double strikes. We're looking at six coming across, and then they're going to have to tap out. Okay, they're going to let us go through. Swing in hot, swing in hot. And then we still have a symbol of the Legion to kind of follow up with on the back end, in our second main phase. So depending on how they want to block, uh, they can block with the God of Victory. It's indestructible where seven is going to come across, tap target, artifact, achievement, or land. Uh, fair enough. Oh, <laughs> okay, that was very interesting. I guess our yeah, either way, we would have knocked our opponent down. Our opponent scoops it up. Uh, so we're looking at six coming across. So to put our opponent down to six um, with the God of Victory out there. I'm not sure what that was. I don't know why I meant to tap on the guy's cradle, but uh, maybe they just miscalculated something. But with the symbol of Legion coming down, they would have had a spot to where... Um, you know, their, their bottleneck is the creature, so they can tap all our creatures, but with the symbol of the Legion, we're going to get in the spots where we're going to start getting those soldiers out there. And even with them tapping the guy's cradle, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five. We'd have enough to get that down to kind of close it out from there. So, all right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks.